Have you ever wondered that which one is better? Why is a qualitative is better than quantitative or quantitative is better than qualitative? So there are some reasons why one is better than another. And that is severely implicated in case of immunology or immunoassays where antigen antibody reactions are involved. So let's dig in and find out which one is best and why it is best. Okay. So let's know the theory. So as I have wrote here for your ease of understanding, if a undiluted specimen containing an antibody directly mixed with the antigen, then what will happen? It will form an observable result for you. Either it will be positive or either it will be negative. So if the patient contains here the undiluted specimen containing antibody means I am searching for the antibody in the patient's serum against the antigen. So patient's serum contains the antibody here. So if patient is positive, then it will give you a positive result. If antibody is there, else it is negative. If no antibody. Because if there is no antibody, there will be no observable reaction in between antibody and antigen. So that's very easy. That is qualitative. Only you will know the presence or the absence of the thing you are searching. You can take antigen instead of antibody in the patient serum and known concentration or the known antibody you, if you have. Vice versa, you can use it to detect the presence of either the antigen or the antibody in the patient serum. So that is qualitative test. Now come to quantitative. So what happens if qualitative test turns positive, then we may want to know the exact concentration of the antibody present in the patient serum or the antigen, whatever you are going to measure. So the quantitation is the quantity of the antigen or the antibody in the patient sample. So qualitative told you about the presence or absence. If it is present, then we will know the concentration. So, antibody concentration in the serum can be known by serial dilution of the serum antibody with the known concentration of antigen or vice versa. So, if antibody concentration you are know, we want to know, then we will search for antibody titer. Right? If you want to know the antigen concentration, we will go for antigen titer. So in case of antibody titer, you will have antibody in the patient serum, which will be serially diluted against the known concentration of antigen, what is written here. And in case of antigen titer, opposite thing will be working upon. Now tell me if a patient, I told you that observable reaction, if there is an observable reaction, then only you will know that there is a positive reaction. So what happens if it comes a false negative or a false positive? Suppose false negative. The patient is positive for the antibody or the antigen you are searching for. But actually it is giving you a negative result. So it is false negative. So how to overcome this? If you think this scenario quantitative test will be better because in case of quantitation you will know the concentration of the antibody you are searching for above the reference level that means it is positive but which is not known for the qualitative so here comes an interesting theory about lattice theory this lattice theory will explain everything why quantitative method is much more valuable and important. So I told you about observable reactions. So observable reaction between antigen and antibody. Antigen and antibody. A observable reaction. That means 
if it is antibody and this is the antigen so all the antibodies and antigens should be in equal amount to give you a observable reaction that is the catch here so if the test has to come positive in the qualitative way the antigen concentration should be equal to the antigen concentration should be equal to antibody concentration but what happens when the antigen concentration is higher or lesser than the antibody concentration or in in this case i am searching for antibody so the antibody is much more reduced concentration than expected and compared to the antigen so what will happen then if the patient is positive or negative so the patient is positive because it has positive antibodies but the concentration of the antibody is not equal to the antigen that's why you are not able to see a observable reaction in this antigen antibody test so what happens it give you a false negative result so a qualitative test can give you a false negative result if the antigen concentration is not equal to the antibody or the antibody concentration is not equal to the antigen so the antigen concentration should be equal to antibody concentration to make a observable antigen antibody reaction remember that this concept applies to precipitation agglutination based immunological test specifically reliable or reliant on antigen antibody concentration to be observed so it can easily give you a false negative result that is why a quantitative test specifically differentiate between true negatives from false negatives or both they can separate that is why quantitative elisa sorry quantitative immuno assay is much more methodical and practical and approachable for differentiating the true negatives and false negatives okay so i hope you are clear with the qualitative and quantitative assays and why the quantitative is important now from where the concept came that antibody is equal to antigen concentration now who told that the antigen and antibody concentration must be equal to observe a, to find a observable reaction to interpret the result as positive or negative here comes interesting theory that is merax lattice hypothesis theory that said what will happen if a antigen is excess than antibody if antibody is excess than antigen and if both are equal so that we will see in the next class if my classes are really helping you in your studies and it is really clearing your concept and if you really like my classes give a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe my channel by affairs this type of subscription and likes give me the enthusiasm to prepare more futuristic classes for you guys to make your classes more concept